Among the labyrinth of choices, all market ETFs are the broadest and the most diversified. They're also the antithesis of sector and single stock ETFs. That's because all market ETFs have a simple mandate, and it's to replicate certain segments of the stock market in the most diversified manner possible. Today's audience requested ETF contest is between all market funds from American Century and Vanguard. Stick around. I'm Ron DeLegge. You're watching ETF Battles, and it's great to have you with us. We're happy to see a lot of new uh, viewers to the show. We're also happy to see some of our uh, loyal viewers that keep coming back. And uh, for both groups, be sure to check out our Season 4 playlist. It's in the description section below. You can see all the programs that we've done this year. And uh, be sure to subscribe for those of you that are new. Also, you can see links to our program judges, along with viewer resources and our program sponsor direction. So today's ETF contest was requested by a viewer named Yugurthen4342, and it's between ticker symbols AVGE from Avantis by American Century and VT from Vanguard. Uh, thank you very much, Yugurt, for that excellent uh, ETF battle suggestion for today's program. Now, although both of these ETFs are global all equity, their investing approach is radically different, as you're about to find out. So which ETF has the superior strategy? Well, judging today's contest is Tom Ferrisagas with Bloomberg and John Davey at Astoria Portfolio Advisors. John manages the inflation-sensitive ETF. That's ticker symbol PPI. And Tom analyzes ETFs with a team of Bloomberg analysts who are at the top of their game. Guys, welcome back. Great to see you. Hey, nice to see you guys. Good to be here. So our four battle categories, there's cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then our mystery category. Now, mysteries where you guys or judges can decide which factor or thing is important to today's contest. You can also nominate wildcard ETFs. You can also offer split decisions. I'll be keeping score, and at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. Now, keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or the judges. So let's start with John. The first category is cost. Get us started. Never going to beat Vanguard, that's for sure. So Vanguard 7 bips, the Vantis 23 bips. Um, I mean, that's pretty cheap, 7 bips for global equities, you know, international developed, emerging markets. Um, but, you know, what do you expect? It's Vanguard. Um, you know, I think Vantis is still relatively cheap for giving you active management. But, you know, 23 bips is more than 7 bips. So, you know, Vanguard wins in this category. Thank you, John. Tom, you're up next. How do you see it? Same. This is a pretty easy one. I, th I think John nailed it by saying, you know, Avantis is active. So 23 basis points for an active strategy is not bad. But seven basis points for 9,000 or so securities, like, are you, are you kidding me? Like, that's insane. Um, so it's not even close, uh, you know, for on the for what you're getting, that kind of exposure. Vanguard it's easily wins this one. Speaking of exposure, that's our next category, exposure strategy. So, Tom, you're still up. Break it down for us. Yeah, this was pretty interesting when I dug into it. So, you know, the Vanguard one is pretty simple, just, you know, market cap weighted, all global stocks. The Avantis one gets pretty involved, and it's a fund to fund. So they're owning their own ETFs, um, all different exposures, U.S., international, you know, small cap REITs, et cetera. But what I found is really interesting um, – to keep in mind, you're, there's some overlap between their ETFs. So let's say they have like a value ETF in there and their US one. There's like 40% of this overlap. So just keep in mind when you're owning that, you might have doubling up in positions. That might be an unintended consequence that you might not realize saying, oh, I have all these different, but they have the same company and a lot of different holdings. So just keep that in mind. Um, you are getting some pretty good diversification uh, across the Avantis product. And their thing tends to be factors, like that's what they're sort of their lifeblooded. So you, it tends to have a little bit of a value tilt as well. Like they throw in their large cap value ETF and their small cap. So um, it, it's not going to do well when value doesn't do well. It's going to it's going to underperform the market. So, um, you know, it's got 12 or so ETFs in there. Overall, I think the exposure is pretty similar, but there are these unintended tilts that you might not get. Um, I think for something like this, if you just want pure uh, broad coverage, VT is just simple. It's market cap weighted. 
um, you know, it's, it's, there's really no surprises, no unintended, uh, you know, overlaps. Um, so for exposure, I, I like the simplicity of VT. I think it's just really hard to, to compete with that. John, you're up next for exposure strategy. How do you see it? You know, in full disclosure, we're active managers at Astoria Advisors. You know, we use rules-based factor ETFs you know, to kind of deliver a unique risk return profile. So we're doing what Advantis is trying to do using just ETFs, but they have, you know, they're trying to accomplish all that within their own ETF. You know, I, I would say, you know, it's a split decision. Like if you want pure passive, then you buy VT, right? And like you're going to do well in certain environments and, you know, in other environments, you know, AVGE will do better because it's active management and, you know, there's really smart guys kind of managing it. Um, you know, the exposures are different, like Tom says. I mean, one's, you know, more kind of skewed towards U.S. Um, in the case of Advantis, you know, they've got like 70% of their fund in U.S. securities, you know, whereas like the globally diversified, you know, VT Acqui is probably about 50-50, right? 50 U.S., 50 non-U.S., so there's, they are making some bets within the Advantage Fund. But honestly, Ron, I give it a split decision. If you want to go active, you, you know, that's a good tool to use. If you just want to buy the, the passive ETF at seven base points, you know, you, you can use VT. So two, two totally different beasts. This is not even really a comparison in my eyes. Like just it's, it's two different animals. So I'll give it a split decision. Got it. That takes us next to performance. And John, you're still up. So break it down for us. Which of these two ETFs stands out when it comes to performance returns? Yeah, I mean, Advantage is new, right? It was only launched in like September 2022. Uh, so there's not a lot of track record. You know, the, the issue that's going on the year to date is that, you know, the S&P, which is driven by, you know, five to seven stocks, you know, if you strip out those stocks, the S&P is marginally up or down depending on the day. Um, so of course, like VT, which is going to have half of it US, half half of the US is market cap weighted. So they're going to have that, you know, kind of growth tilt towards the AI stocks, you know, the, the FANG type stocks. So year to date, you know, VT is up 10.3%. The Advantage Fund, which is more kind of going to go into the academic, like the value, small cap, tilt based on factors, that's up only about 6%. Um, so it's just probably unique to this year, right? So you know, I, it's too short of a time frame. I can't really give a vote when you've got, you know, three quarters worth of track record. So, again, I don't really think of this as like a fair comparison to different beasts. Um, and I don't think anyone should be judged just based on three quarters. I think you need many years of, of return streams in order to kind of really go battle to battle. So no category winner. Tom, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of performance? Yeah, it's, it is a short t uh, track record. Vanguard is outpacing it a little bit. You're going to be very heavy U.S. no matter which one you pick. About 70 or so percent of the exposure is coming from the U.S. Um, you know, with the Avantis one, like, like John, because they are active, you might have times where certain things start to, to pop up and do well. Um, Advantis, I don't. Uh, like I said, this is a tough one because Advantis is very good at their active stuff. They've raised quite a bit of money. I, I think when it comes to factor investing, they're, they're one of the best providers out there. I think for something like this, just for all world exposure, um, I lean towards just Vanguard because it's just – it's easy. It's simple. And the one thing that I can control and our investor can control is cost, right? And so seven bips for broad – exposure like that is a pretty good deal um again the, i know the performance might vary you know based on their tilts but i think for the long term if you want just a passive product go with vanguard if you like active you like advantage i think 23 basis points for this is a very good deal too for what you're getting but um you know i'm leaning just towards simplicity here and, and for a beta type product i, I think it's just going to be really hard to dislodge vt and i just think long term being able to keep the cost down definitely gives you an advantage so i'm going to give this to the vanguard total market etf that takes us to the mystery battle category this is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors that they feel are crucial to today's contest so tom you're up what is your mystery battle category and which of these etfs wins it i'm gonna go on something called portfolio turnover and even though the advantage product only has 12 etfs and they're trading those 12 etfs 
those ETFs themselves can be making a lot of changes. So just keep in mind that even though you're holding the one ETF, there are changes going on within that. So you could have a lot of turnover in the strategy. It might not be apparent to you because you're just holding those ETFs. So just if you, it's like inception. If you go a couple layers down, you might see that there's more turnover down there. You're not going to have a lot in the Vanguard fund. So I think if for a cheap product, low turnover, um, that's my mystery about a category. Vanguard's is going to be very low compared to, uh, the advantage one. So, and I, I like that, uh, at least for a beta product. So mystery bag category, turnover, low, I'm going to give it to VT. John, you're up next. Your mystery battle category, what is it? And which of these two ETFs wins it? You know, I would say like portfolio construction, tilts, sector weights, you know, I, I like where uh, Advantis is. Like when I look at like how they're skewing their, you know, their positions across energy materials, industrials, so they're basically overweight some of the cyclical areas, of some of the more inflation-sensitive sectors like energy materials, you know, financials, industrials. They're underweight technology. Their underweight tech technology is actually pretty significant. I mean, those are all the tilts that we kind of have in our portfolios. Um, so we're thinking along the same wavelength. So I just like the way the Advantage, Advantage one is constructed. So I'd give that as the category winner of like sector weights, portfolio construction. Excellent. So now we've moved to the part of the show where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. How will it go down? John, give it to us. Which of these ETFs is your battle winner? It's very difficult. Like, I like the simplicity of VT. Um, but, you know, in my heart, like, we are active managers and we're tilting based on factors, based on empirical evidence. We're doing the same thing Advantage is doing, like, just with our own ETFs that we like. Um, so I, I give that as our category winner. Again, as I mentioned before, I don't really think this is like an apples to apples comparison, but I like to on this show when I participate, kind of put my money where my mouth is, and that's what we do. So we would never use the VT because we're trying to outperform the VT. So I'd give my overall category winner to AVGE. Tom, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Give it to us. Yeah, similar sentiment. It's a tough choice because um, I like Avantis. I think Active has gotten really interesting in the ETF space. I think for what they do, it's it's a very good value. And I think the flow show it. That's always the end sign. I I like Avantis in specialized things like value, like in the factors themselves. I think when you start to go up against really broad, diversified funds like VT, it just becomes harder. Um, so just overall... To the opposite of John's point, I like the simplicity of VT, but I do like Avantis in some of the very specific factor categories. So I think keep them on your radar. But I, overall, for something like this, just broad market exposure, I'm leaning towards VT. I like its simplicity. I like its low cost. That would be my overall pick. Well, our judges have spoken. And according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is a split decision between AVGE, which John favored, and VT, which Tom favored, and each of our judges made some great points. Of course, John, leaning towards AVGE, that just aligns a little bit more with his investment approach and philosophy and the value minded mindset. And um, he liked also the fact that AVGE's got the overweight to those cyclical st- sectors. Tom making the point that VT, listen, what a wonderful uh, product to have if you want broad diversification and it's really cheap too. So he liked that. And um, other points that were made, you know, keep in mind that the performance history for AVGE is very limited. So we, we can't really deduce much from that. But uh, for each of these ETFs, they're good at what they do. And I think our judges pointed that out. And I think uh, at least we've given you from, the, from this particular program a, a good place to further your research and dig a little bit deeper. But again, judges, great job with uh, breaking down today's ETF contest. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, this was great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thank you again, John and Tom, for all your help with today's ETF showdown. Well done. Keep up the good work. Visit the description section below. We've got research links to our judges. Also, while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction. Keep your ETF battle suggestions coming. Send me your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.